Well, hello, Greyhawk Channel. It is Saturday night. It is an all right night for fighting as we are sitting here getting ready to listen to some funky battle brain music that I'm going to turn down a little bit since we are already inside the valley. Uh, thank you for joining us after our week hiatus. Uh, a couple of us were in Gen Con um, last week this time. We were in Indianapolis, which is almost as scary as the Valley of Soot and Skull. No, I'm joking. Indianapolis is actually a very, very nice place, and I miss it greatly. Anywho, with all those pleasantries aside, I'm feeling a bit magnanimous, which I'm pretty sure was defined to me a long time ago as vengeful. Might be wrong about that, but I'm going to go with it. Vengeful is, is how I'm feeling. So we are going to get back into the Valley of Soot and Skull with a bit of a refresher and a bit of a reminder. But before we do all that, this is the Greyhawk channel, so welcome to the Greyhawk channel. And before we get too deep into everything we're doing, oh, everybody, I've got something for you. And the first thing I've got for you is before we get started, I need to talk to all of our sponsors out there. We've got Tabletop Loot, and I used my Tabletop Loot dice at Gen Con and by God, they were awesome for me. I've got Dragon Bone, I got Saints Relic. They were rolling me 20s, rolling me 12s when I was doing my Barbarian stuff. That's a lie, I didn't play a Barbarian, but I saw the 12 there and I said, thought I'd say something about it. Anyway, in addition to that, we've also got Devin Rue, the mistress of the maps, who is a friend, goddess, and patron of this beautiful place that is the Greyhawk channel. So please go visit her over on Rue Inc. Tell her you're from the Greyhawk channel, and you will be rewarded for the kind soul that you are. And finally, for all of our Twitch subscribers and Patreon supporters, go on over to Cantrip Candles. And tonight, what am I sniffing? It is, it is magnanimous, which, like I said, smells like vengeance. It's so I was right. Thank you, middle school. Um, and that's it. That's where we are. Greyhawk channel. Let's go around and talk to everybody, reacquaint ourselves with who we will be playing, who the players are that will be playing, the people that will be playing these things, what their classes and races are, and then we'll jump right back into the Valley of Soot and Skull. So let's start where we should, right above me with Lauren. Lauren, how are you doing this Saturday night? I'm doing great, Greg. Always on top here. Hi, I'm Lauren. I'm not salty ginger over on Twitter, and tonight I'm playing the Half-Elf Bard. <laughs> 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 
Billy. <laughs> and, you know, she's super excited, dragon slaying, solving puzzles, just generally disintegrating anything that inconveniences her. I love her lots. Super excited. I'm really done. I'm done now. You're done. You're giving up? Or you're done. You, you've, you've given us everything. I'm done with this us. introduction, Greg. Okay. Um, okay, fine. Let us cut then directly over beside Lauren to uh, the elf with the blue hair. Aris, how are you doing today? And wait a minute. I just heard this. Wait, this just in. It was somebody's birthday recently. Was, was that you, Aris? Yes, I am Aris Havad. <laughs> I have not been drinking at all. Not one bit. Um, it was my birthday yesterday. I'm playing Kaylee, the blue haired what elf druid who had a recent heart to heart with uh, Giddy. And uh, she's ready to kick Monica's ass. Just saying. <laughs> the greatest thing, maybe the greatest line I've ever heard, you're ready to kick Monica's ass. For those of you that don't realize <laughs> these references, we will explain to you exactly who our uh, illustrious band here is fighting as soon as we go around the horn. Let's drop now below our uh, blue-haired birthday girl to <laughs> Brew, who's just blue. Brew, how are you doing today, bud? Uh, doing pretty good. i uh, been going since uh, 7 a.m., been going strong. Uh, looking forward to uh, uh, actually uh, kicking something's butt pretty pretty well, at least uh, early on. Uh, uh, in my element here... Uh, fighting something that I can hurt a lot and that uh, can't hurt me all that much. So uh, uh, it's uh, it's been fun. Nice, nice, nice. And that, we all know, always works out for everybody. Um, okay, Brew, you, you seem optimistic. I, I'll take that with a grain of salt. Um, I'm feeling magnanimous, so I guess we're in the same boat. Mm. Let's go over to the man, Pro. Pro, no mask tonight. He wants, he's, this is the real him. He's stripping it down. He's going acoustic. How are you doing, buddy? Uh, hey, yeah, I'm good. I'm totally, I totally didn't forget to put my mask on before we started. I was too lazy to go get it. It totally wasn't me. Um, you know, I'm totally responsible. Hey, I'm pro. Uh, pro restart, to be exact. I'm going to be playing Gray Fox, uh, the mysterious masked man, apparently. Um, and, uh, yeah, I am in uh, Moon Elf. And I am, my class is 7341. That's right. Much to this DM's dismay, but I'm feeling magnanimous. So with my magnanimity, but whatever that is, let's jump to our final player. Heavenly, how are you doing this evening? And are you ready for a little Saturday night fight? I'm so excited to be back. I actually came home from work last Saturday and I had forgotten that we weren't streaming. And it was the saddest thing that's ever happened to me second only to when you killed my dad in front of all of these people on the very first episode that was your dad <laughs> yes that was her dad he oh raised my gosh. he raised me i am playing giddy um i'm a gnome i think i've forgotten at this point i'm a gnome i'm a gnome I'm, i know that for sure i'm a gnome monk i am not ready to kick anyone's ass but i am ready to have a to continue this one-on-one -on -one, like heartfelt kind of unpacking of all of our traumas with Joey. And I think I'm really close. I think I'm really close to breaking the surface. Good, good. Um, and that's right, yes. Did I kill a father? You know, you kill one father and you're a father <laughs> killer. But- um, They but, never but, let but, you live it down. Right. With that being said, I, I, I'm magnanimous tonight. And uh, uh, with my magnanimous attitude, I will seek horrific vengeance on these people because as we all know, that's what the word means. Um, but before we go forward, we have to go back, figure out what we've done so we can know what we need to do. And in going back two weeks, we experienced the following. The crew had just fought through Pyrecos the first flame and were able to enter the Valley of Soot and Skull. Upon needing a rest, they discovered that the valley could not be advanced into, that there was some magic at play here in this very artificial valley. Their investigations turned up, uh, specifically with Kaylee the Druid, that this place held while a look of being something natural. It was in fact constructed. And with this construction, it was 
it had elements that were so off, it was off-putting. The air doesn't blow correctly. It doesn't aid for thermal flight whenever there was a wild shape that was taken. It, it, it blows in different directions. It, can, it doesn't contain itself with a breeze or a jet stream that the normal world would give you. Um, as all this investigation went along, they realized that in the distance of the valley, the valley which was almost arrow straight, in that V of the valley that they were looking down through, they saw a structure, but couldn't make out too much of it other than it held the geometry of something that was made. Man-made? Perhaps. But as they sat down and tried to advance into the valley, they realized they could not. Um, they tried many different magics in addition to their investigations and were rewarded with uncovering an illusory sign that said, free yourselves. So taking that into consideration, they all went into the magical yurt that was created by Billy. And inside said yurt, they were able to take a rest and kind of get a little of their puff back after battling Pyrocos the first flame. While inside, Kaylee had a heart-to-heart -heart with Giddy, who was coming to a come-to Paylor moment, if you will, because she had broken her pacifism beliefs while actually striking Pyrocos the first flame in an effort to save her downed paladin and druid. And save them, the crew did. But it was a discussion with Kaylee the druid that may have helped her a bit, redefine her objectives as something that is not necessarily constricting, like a law of uh, being a pacifist, but something that is necessary and why they are all, have all been gathered here in the valley. So whenever watch was taken in the yurt, uh, Kaylee decided to have her watch, and during her watch, she was visited by a very interesting individual, Duke Dun 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 Delac. And as Duke Dun Delac came in, he propositioned Kaylee with asking her exactly why she was going into the valley, and the reward for completing the valley's many challenges was purportedly godhood. And was she willing to... Did she desire it? Did she this? And with a bit of a back and forth between the two of them, Kaylee had enough, turned heel, walked away, sprinkled salt, and left Duke Dundalock to, you know, pick up his ass and walk on back home. And so when the next day came up, the group decided, hey, by process of elimination, they realized that the free yourself might actually mean to separate. And so... While not knowing the directions of this strange valley of soot and skull, the five of them decided to split up, one going north, one going south, one going west, one going east, and one staying still. Uh, Giddy was in the center, remaining still, and she kept Sister Ernestine, who was the last of her order, the person that they need to carry through the valley of soot and skull, presume or if, if the prophecy is to be believed, once through there, they would be able to activate whatever gifts and powers the Valley of Soot and Skull possesses through legend and fable. But as they all split apart, getting farther and farther away from each other without the ability to retrace and backtrack and come together again, uh, unlike the Beatles, um, once they were separated and split up, they were attacked individually by the same type of creature. And while we had five of these creatures, it was just my idea to name them after the friends. Uh, Ross, Rachel, Monica, Chandler, and Joey. And so as these creatures began to attack, hurting many, Billy was able to best hers. But we are now back at the top of the order. And before we do anything else, I will ask my group, is there anything that you need as far as a recap mechanically before we get into this? I know that uh, with Kaylee's uh, Monica, Monica hasn't been touched, but she has suffered some a bit of contagion. And now she is vulnerable to all forms of damage. Um, other than that, there are no effects in place on these, the remaining living friends. Um, but as was suggested in chat last week, someone asked the question, where's Phoebe? She's coming. I actually do believe that I have healing spirit up, but I can't remember... Hey, I'm feeling magnanimous. I'll give it to you. Wait. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'll give it to yeah, you. Yeah, I passed it on myself at one point 
or another, but I don't remember when it was. So you can tell me that it, I don't have it, and I'm perfectly okay with that. But um, I here's like the compromise. Point. Yeah, here's the compromise. We'll say that you dropped it uh, the last round. So any effects that it might be giving you will start this round oh, of. Yep. I cast it the last round after the round before I cast Contagion, and then I, the the next round I cast Healing Spirit. I'm looking through the, the uh, rolls. Um, the next round I cast Healing Spirit. That's clever. So I have Healing Spirit on me. Contagion is going, but it's not concentration. Healing Spirit is though. Excellent, excellent. So we are where we need to be. We are brought yep. forward, brought around. We are. We've gone back to go forward. The then is the now. We are at the top of the round as we are going to <clears throat> go into these creatures once more. And I will take us over to the play mat. There we go. Hey, look at me remembering dice rolls and all that good stuff. Um, okay, so as we are back around, it's at the top of the order. Gray Fox, you are facing the fiend known as Ross. And for everybody, a recap of what these lovely creatures look like. They've got some wings, they've got big old bellies, uh, and they've got kind of a toothy up, upper bite uh, tusk going by their noses. They're beautiful creatures. Um, they too are magnanimous. Uh, let us see what you would like to do, Pro, as you're up. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Uh... Did I move away last round? I can't remember. Is he up against me? You are, as far as I have written down here, you have been left in melee with them because yeah. he uh, goes after you. And so he's yeah. constantly moving into you. I wasn't sure. Okay, so cool. Then I'm going to use my bonus action then to use my last key point to disengage. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to move uh, my full 40 feet. Um, and then I'm just going to keep doing what I've been doing. I'm going to sharpshooter it. And it's going to be like, I don't know how much I can take this. Just die. And I'm going to sharpshooter you. Nope. God, that's such good damage there. Yeah, it's great damage, but it doesn't hit. God, it so yeah, that's, that's a shitty one, too. <laughs> Are we done? Nothing left, right? Yeah, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> you don't have anything more, 7341? You don't have, like, a, you know, a backup key point or your backup monk class or anything that you can pull out here? This is, this is for the dragon. I know it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So as you were able to back away, now the, the, the lovely friends get a chance to um, show their stuff. And so Ross is able to close in again on um, how many how many feet did you move away? Four. Okay. Well, he just pop. But he what's my total? Yeah, he can make it there. So he's gonna roll in, and as he rolls in, he is going to throw. Oh, yeah, two melee attacks. And so, well, that's not how I do those. Greg, what are you doing? As I stutter and. Stop there is beep boop. Uh twenty-four? Uh yeah, yes, yeah. Okay, we got that. And that'll be twelve slashing. Oh, yeah. Okay. And mm -hmm. a fourteen? Fourteen doesn't hit you, right? No, it doesn't hit me now. Okay, so Ross hits you. Uh total damage for the round is twelve slashing as he gets forward <laughs> and swings it down because, you know, he's got Funagi and all that good stuff. And then we cut over to Billy, uh, or I'm sorry, we go down to uh, Rachel. Rachel is on Rex, and Rachel is going to take two attacks as well. 15's not going to hit him, and a nat 1 surely is not going to hit him as, wait a minute, and these are at disadvantage too, right? Because of your, so the first one's a nat 1. And 14's not going to hit the man either as Rachel, she just, she, she picked the wrong person to dance with at this party. And there is once again, no joy for Rachel and the clever haircut that she has. As we jump down to Monica, who is currently on Kaylee, Monica is going to take her attacks as well as she comes in. Does a 16 hit? 
No, it does not. Okay. Sorry, I was muted. Does a 28 hit? 28 hits. It, hit. Yeah, I guess it hits. 14 slashing as again the great axe falls, cutting into the druid. Um, I'm assuming that there's elf blood splattering along the dust of the Valley of Soot and Skull. Yes, Billy, there as is you a are. Lot of blood. Yeah, Billy, from this distance, you can see that Kaylee is in dire straits uh, as far as being toe to toe with this creature because your creature, as we get to Chandler, is dead. As, yes, Chandler the Friend, all of his witty comebacks could not save him in the face of a true professional bard. Um, so, Billy, you have the ability to kind of peruse this as you have a moment's respite. Uh, we'll get to your, you, you're on deck, though. You are going to be coming up in a second. Um, Giddy, Joey, who you had, you felt that you had reached for a second. You, you, you really thought that you made a connection with this uh, creature that desperately wants to just act. He just wants to be an actor. But um, he couldn't maintain the role, and he is now going to attack you twice. Does an 18 hit you? Mm hmm. Yeah. It does. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, okay, it does. And uh, that's 19 slashing. Okay. That's, that's pretty good. Uh, 24 is going to hit you too for 15 slashing. So that's a total of 34 I am, slashing. I just drop like a sack of potatoes. Okay, so here's what happens. And Billy, you get a front row seat for this. Oh, <laughs> God. As the first of the attacks come in, you see Sister Ernestine step in front <gasps> of the shot and you see yeah. the ax deflect to the sand after hitting something in front of Sister Ernestine. But Sister Ernestine is no longer there as Angel the Bard reveals himself as Sister Ernestine. And as the blade hits the bottom of the Valley of Soot and Skull. He turns around and looks at Giddy and just shrugs. You uh, have... <laughs> hello. Only six seconds, no time to talk. As we <laughs> go to Billy, Billy, you see this revelation as the cloak that conveniently hid the form of Sister Ernestine. And whenever she slept, she sounded like she was getting better because she was never really sick. We literally had this discussion in the secret planning chat today. I defended you, Sister Ernestine. I defended you. I said she was bullshit. I'm feeling it all. I'm feeling it all right now. Great. So can I see everyone now? Because we couldn't yes. see each other before. Yes, but you are only in range of Kaylee. Uh -huh. uh, well, actually, no. Kaylee is in the opposite direction of you. So Kaylee would be 300 feet away from you. Uh, Giddy is 150 feet. And for, for the lack of just rounding up, about 200 and change would be... Uh, Gray Fox and Rex. Oh, my glasses fell off. Okay, so cool, great. Let me see the range on this then. I'm just yelling, what the fuck? Really loudly across 150 feet, so. You you hit with your what the fuck. Uh, great. Not 20. <laughs> I thought so. Um, I usually do. So I'm gonna move 30 feet. Um, which puts me just in range to cast Bigby's hand from 120 feet around, away. Yeah. And I am going to, I guess we're going to grab the thing. We're gonna grab it. We're gonna just mm, grab it. Okay, cool. you're going to uh, grab Joey. Joey yes, of the I... Axe Strikes. Yeah. Okay. And what do you need bolt. from me? So we're going to uh, do opposing strength. Yeah, that seems right. Yeah. Fifteen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nat 
fucking 20 as Joey is lifted off his feet and, you know, I never wanted any of this. As he's uh, being pulled up into the air. He can't um, move now. I don't feel like moving. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I so wouldn't he's, Yep, he's pulled up and Angel looks back at uh, Giddy and... We're going to have him move on the same turn as Billy because bards of a feather. Gross. And he is going to cast a uh, healing word as it's 2d4 plus four, correct? For I think so. We're going with that. Uh, he's able to get eight hit points back into Giddy as he turns around. Uh, whispers something into the wind in perfect pitch and it is able to give you back some strength. Uh, Billy, in addition what? to casting this and on your turn, um, would you roll I don't want a perception to. check for me? Yeah, a perception check would probably be the best right now. You need to 30, use for this. 30, 30, 30. Good, good. That's great because that means you have a great perfect <laughs> shot of the beholder coming in behind you. Um, Why? Because At I told you, you Phoebe coming. was coming. At least you see it coming. He see, Phoebe sees you. She sees you coming. You see her. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a greeting. It's you a know what? All those Phoebe together. is watching messages really make sense. <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of like Greg being a dick for two weeks. Or his I've whole never life. I've experienced right. that before. Yeah, I have no idea what you're talking about, Greg. <laughs> Greg Nanimous. Okay, so uh, I will let uh, chat know this. You're about to see a bard go up against the beholder. <laughs> if you've got divine favor, and I usually don't ask for it because I like to see characters die. <laughs> Come on, it was my Jen. birthday yesterday. Don't kill Billy. I love her too much. Well, I'm going to. Um, okay, so <laughs> as we get through Billy's round, uh, let us go back up to Kaylee. Kaylee, you are staring at a very, very irritated Monica. What would okay. you like to do? So I'm going to take the attack action. But first I'm going to take the attack action with my quarter stuff. Then I have extra attack, so I'm going to hit her with my offhand, and then I'm going to spend a key point to get two bonus action attacks to kick her with each of my legs, because that's fun. So you're going all limbs, quarter staff, to yeah, Monica. Essentially. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it. There's, there's, there's a reference here. I know there's a reference here. I don't know where it's from. So somebody in chat, you got to give me a reference because there's one thing where there's this guy like he's doing some moves and you see his legs coming up, but you know, it's not actually him. Anyways, there's a reference here. I know it. Anyways, we're going to, we're going to track that one down <laughs> <laughs> with all the details that you provided. It should be very easy. Okay, guys, I, everybody find out that, that, that really show where the guy this. kicks his legs up. We're pretty sure it's not him. <laughs> And uh, there's you know. a movie. Right. I want to say it's like Zoolander or something, but that's not right. Um, 24 to hit for the first one. Oh, yeah, that's going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Eight bludgeoning damage. And that'll, then that'll... we got one. That'll, that'll hit. hit. Six bludgeoning nice. damage. And they're vulnerable to all of this. Everything's so double getting that. doubled. Correct. Yep. Uh, 22 to hit. That's correct. Yep. That'll hit. Okay. Four bludgeoning four. damage. Uh, I got one more. You do. Uh, that one ten. will not hit. So that one misses. The last leg just kind of... This thing has gotten smart. It, it knows where she's going. So it just... It misses by inches, but it just misses. Uh, that will do 36 points of damage to Monica as she no likey the sticky, the punchy, or one of the kickies as you are <laughs> able to... Uh, lay a considerable fucking beat down on her here at the beginning. Uh, Kaylee, do you have anything else you would like to do or can you do anything else here? Um, as... At the start of my turn, I take 1d6 hit points because of my um, 
healing spirit. My healing spirit, yes. Is it plus anything? Let me just double check. I don't think so, but... No, just 1d6. So, here we go. I get three hit points. That is okay, better than those, nothing. Add those three hit points back in there. And... Let us go then to, if there's nothing else, Giddy, Giddy, you are staring at two new arrivals. A Big B's hand, which has picked up Joey, who seems forlorn, um, and Angel the Bard, who is, or was, in the guise of Sister Ernestine, and he is looking at you, offering a shrug. He has just given you a healing word, and you have six seconds you may do whatever you would like in said six seconds, and uh, we'll see what can get done. Any attacks against the creature, too, will be done in, as auto crits, I believe, because he is held and restrained. So if you want to just beat the piss out of Joey, now is the time. Yeah, I, <laughs> I'm feeling very shook right now, and I, I just feel like at this point, I don't know where I am. I just punched a dragon earlier and it made me really sad. I tried to talk to this dragon and it didn't work. So I feel like my my ability to communicate isn't working. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take out my my quarter staff and I'm gonna go, I hate this place. And I'm gonna whack Joe with it. I hate it too, he says <laughs> as you bring the stick down on his face. Um, okay, you get to roll with advantage here as you uh, bring this down on a restrained cat, and then if you hit, we're gonna, ah, oh, you missed it. You're just so upset you missed it. So as it as it skips past, um, I'm so glad you didn't hit me. Um, I'm still gonna, no, I'm gonna punch him because I'm gonna use flurry of blows. Okay. I'm gonna punch him twice. I'm gonna just gonna, I'm gonna beat my fist against him. I go, I want to go home. Right, it, with, with Punches that could break stone, but yes, you're doing that. <laughs> Let's see what we got. Oh yeah, that first one's gonna hit. Okay. Four, four, created that up to eight. Go ahead. There we go. That's what I got. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and double that stuff to 22. So uh, with 22 away as you're just... Joey at this point is just like a training implement. He's like a speed bag or a heavy bag. So as you drop these down on top of him for 22 hit points, um, is there anything else you would like to do in these few moments that you have? Uh, no. Okay. I'm not even going to look at Angel. You can't because he is too beautiful. Uh, Rex, what would you like to do, my friend, as we go to you? <clears throat> All right, I'll go ahead and uh, take two more swings at uh, Rachel, as much as it hurts me because I, I'm a Rachel fan. Um, but let's see, where is... I'll do the first one. Uh, 13, is that hit? That does not hit, my friend. All right, and the second one. The second one hits, I'm assuming? Yeah, that looks like it's going to do it. All right. Uh, I'll also pump a second level Divine Smite into that. Sure. So we'll do the longsword damage first. So that's 10. And then improve, uh, improve Divine Smite. That's another 8. So 18. And then the third level Smite would be 2d8 would be 3d8. Or second level Smite would be 3d8. <clears throat> So that's an oh Jesus, the hell! That's another that's another five. <laughs> that's five. As uh. Rachel is gifted with a uh, a bit of a reprieve there, as it was looking looking bad for, her, but it looks like it'll have to wait on death at least for another round. Is there anything else you would like to do, Rex? Can I curse as a free action? You're a paladin. No, you cannot. So, I'm only neutral good. <laughs> well, you can say like, gosh golly gee willikers or something. And Dang it. 
<laughs> right. Oh, the, the crowd, the clouds go black. Lightning crackles across the sky. Oh, uh, I really out. think it depends on your god. Oh yeah, I, I think actually my god would pretty be uh, would be a swearing god actually. It's like a sailing god, yeah, totally. Right. Yeah. It would right. be sacrilegious not to swear. Okie dokie. So that takes us through the horn and back up to Gray Fox as Gray Fox is staring down the pipe at Ross, who Ross is looking rough, but Ross is still very deadly as missing yeah. him will uh, let him be deadlier. So, hey. Yeah. What's a, uh, what's a great hidden potion again? Uh, okay. a gr- Hoodie, Hoodie 44 plus 4. Mm-hmm. It's a bonus action today, though, right? Cool, cool, cool. Yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna just like pop that. I'm just gonna be like, oh, I'm glad I bought these for a reason. Actually, they're making me use it. Good job. Ooh. 12. I just healed back what I took. <laughs> nice. Um. Yeah, so I'm going to uh, just. Uh, You are in melee. Yeah, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just um, uh, stole my bow and take out my two scimitars. Um, and I'm just going to uh, just be like, it's been a while since I had to use these. Let's give it a go. And, uh, Someone's going to do a word in his ass. Let's do this. I hope so, jeez. That's a hit. Seven. Uh, no, no, I can't tell you this because I think so. That is also a hit. And uh, as I'm as I'm wielding them, I get a plus two AC because of agile, um, because of my um, uh, uh, Kenzo monk. So I get plus two AC while I'm wielding, wielding melee weapons. Okay, and you don't have to, that's just an automatic drop-in form. You don't need to, like, bonus action activate it or anything. You no, it's to... like, with my Kenzo shot, it's when I use okay. my uh, my thing. It's, it's the in replace of Kenzo shot. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, so uh, Ross is reeling. He is not looking good. He is looking rather rough. Uh, however, it is not going to stop him from taking two swings at you. So we jump back up to the Order of the Fiends. 14? The miss, no. Slash my uh, rapiers 17? Around. Now that I have my uh, rapiers out, I uh, have a plus oh, two to AC. Look 19. how that works out. As Ross is, has, there's no joy in Mudville for Ross. And then we go down to Rachel, who is going to be swinging at disadvantage. Uh, nope. Nope, nope, nope. Uh-oh. 22. 22 does hit. 22 would hit me. Yep. Yep. So that's 16 slashing as Rachel is finally able to connect with her axe against the uh, elusive, nimble, and deity protected paladin. And then we go down to Kaylee, who has, in fact, Monica. Monica was dealt a grievous blow last time. 17, we know, does hit. For 15 slashing. And the 11. So as the axe comes down and Kaylee takes this blow that almost sends her into the great beyond, she is still upright as the the stumble, more than anything else of the druid falling back, makes Monica miss with the second strike. And as we go down to Joey... Joey can't do anything, and I'm going to say he's having an existential crisis. He's not going to even try. He's just going to sit there and accept his fate as um, he is uh, weeping uh, the first genuine tears of his thespianic life. So yeah. as yep, yep. So as we're sitting there, we do, however, have a new friend that has arrived on the scene, and that new friend, of course, is Phoebe. And as Phoebe comes in, what I would like, give me 
one second while I get over here. Still a bit out of range as the creature floats in. Just enough for just enough for one strike. And as this comes in, I would like a dexterity saving throw from Now I'll remind you, being a benevolent DM that I am, I believe we have some past divine favors that are in play. Mm-hmm. Yes. So I am just throwing that out there to let the breeze take it. 26. She rolls it anyway, like a baller. Okay, so with that done, uh, da, 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 da. Um, I think though, uh, you don't take anything with this. It's not, if the okay. creature is... Damage reducing. Nope, nope. You don't even take. You don't even take half. Um, okay. I'm not so, mad. what you will see is this: as the beam shoots past you, that one of the eye stalks turns, and as it kind of squints and fires, you see this very gray beam come out that seems almost as if a one of those old TVs that Brew and I used to have to carry into homes <laughs> for old people and now we're the old people, uh, when they used to go staticky, when they would lose the station and you'd have that feed of gray and black and white, it looks as if the beam consists of that. And when you move, as it strikes past you, lancing through the air, smelling of emptiness, as it strikes the ground about 10 feet behind you, a large 10 by 10 foot section of the Valley of Soot and Skull disappears. Billy, you're up. Oh, great. That's wonderful. I'm so happy. How far away is it? Uh, it was cruising in, and it is now. I, I, I was benevolent there and only let one of those things go off. Um, <laughs> it is still about 50 feet away from you. OK. Sweet. Love it. Dope. Um, shit, 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 shit. I will. Hmm. <laughs> I guess I'm going to run away. And I what? will. Yeah, calm down. Hi. Bod. Uh, how would you like to do that? <laughs> well. I mean, I don't know how much Billy knows about Beholders, but I think it's about to get real bad. Um, oh, she's a bard. I, she knows everything. Oh, shit. So, okay, great. So she knows that she thinks she's in a cone right now? The big eye's looking at you. So happy. So happy about that. Okay. That's great. I love, I love being an arcane magic user right now. Mm, mm, mm. Okay. I will, I'm going to, I need to get out of there. I'm going to, I guess I'm going to try and, cause that's not gonna work. Do, hmm. Can, okay. I'm super good at geometry. I've just decided if I, do you, do I think if I go to the side, I'm more likely to get out of its range, or am I like dead in the center of it? Um, you think that if you moved your full movement to either the right or the left, you could probably pull yourself out of its range, out of its gaze of the central eye. Right, yeah. Um, and since we're doing theater of the mind, I will let you know that you're pretty sure you'd be able to pull yourself out. Okay, okay, cool. Uh, I'm going to do that. I'm going to move it, move it. That's okay, so I'll, I'll ask you this question. Uh, moving to the right or the left would draw you closer to one of the two people. Uh, since you're facing the beholder, if you move to your left, you'll actually be moving closer towards Gray Fox. If you move mm -hmm. to the right, it would draw you closer towards Rex. Um, I have no great opinion i don't know what's going on with them so i'll go toward rex i don't know what's happening with them so 
I'm just gonna choose that. Okay, and then you have made your move. <laughs> what would you yeah. like to do? I mean, that's I mean, that's it. Um, I don't think I'm close enough to inspire anyone but myself, which I'm sure I'll need. So, uh, yep, just running is fun. I like doing it. Mm hmm. Okay, so you're running, mm -hmm. running, 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 uh, running. Okay, so as you're running out, uh, you, you've gotten out of the range. You kind of feel the tingly come back to you as you are reacquainted with the weave. Um, let us go then to Kaylee, as Kaylee is at how many hit points? Two hit points. I am at two hit points. I am going to use my, well, first, at the start of my turn, I'm going to get a d6 from my healing spirit. So once I, my, there it is. Six. Six! Yay! Okay, okay we're starting well, off. That. This is looking good. This is looking great. Okay, so that is a free thing. And then I'm going to use my bonus action to take a greater healer potion because that's good. Alrighty, alrighty. I'm liking how this is going. Yep, 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 yep. Now, does Healing Spirit give you anything as far as maxing out any healing magics in the sphere? It does not, uh, okay. to my knowledge. Ooh, that hey. was really good, too. 18's great. I am I am 100% okay with that. And then I'm going to use my action once my character sheet loads, because my computer is being not so great. Um, close to 8, I'll do that later. Um, I'm going to use the rest of my action to uh hit it with my staff actually no i'm gonna use my action to cast blight on it uh so make a dc we're gonna go levels hold on i'm holding holding pattern level four blight Mr. Anders. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, level four blight. Uh, make a DC thirteen con save. Sweet. Jesus. Okay. Ah, uh, he makes it. That is sixteen. Okay. But Do that's half, think? right? Yes. I take the full. I but... take the full amount because it's vulnerable, and he would pop back up to thirty-five. Okay. Yep. So um, I will let you know that you have just killed Monica as you were able to uh, turn the tables on the the neat freak friend and with a 35 necrotic blasting into her, you see as the creature is covered in boils as this blight rips through her jugular and causes like a hemorrhage, like a, a hemorrhage as each of the vessels in the very thick and defined neck sputter and spurt and blow out with enough force to kind of spray you in a fine pink mist um it's almost as if you anybody looking would see kaylee get flushed as this mist kind of settles over top of her but you have come back from the brink druid and you have bested yes. the creature in front of you i will let you know this uh prepare yourself <laughs> as we go down to Giddy, Giddy, you have Joey that you are using as a Sugar Ray punching bag. Is this something you wish to continue to do? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit him with my my staff again, and I'm gonna punch him, and I'm gonna just be yelling, "Leave us alone! Just leave!" I can't. I'm being held by big hands. I mean, I wish I could. Again, the staff does not hit, as in your grief, you cannot connect with the staff. It's like one of those ones that folds up, so I imagine that I didn't actually unfold it. So it's just like, I'm just like limply like... <laughs> right, you have a flaccid pole that you're just kind of like, just whipping him with. <laughs> no, right. what is this torture? Um, okay. 
Now I'm gonna punch him twice. Okay. Well, I mean, yeah, that's gonna hit. Okay. That's not gonna hit, but you get advantage, so roll it again. Oh. That's gonna hit, and we'll take damage for that one. Eight, and I'll tell you what, because I didn't have you roll advantage on the first one because it already hit, go ahead and roll another roll in case it's a nat 20. With my staff? No, 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 with oh, your flurry with my of blows. Just, yeah, okay. Roll one more flurry of blows, blow, 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 you know what I mean. Flurry of blows. Okay, now we'll go with the first one, and so, uh, eight and eight, eight and four, eight and eight and 16, and 16 to 32, and 32. Yeah, uh, you're just beating the shit out of him. He can't really do Did anything. Did you just go German on us? Just, uh, don't a bit. don't whenever, ask. Whenever okay. I have, <laughs> just favorite. I to, you know, I, do I, mass, I have to do it. <laughs> I haven't been trusting my senses today. <laughs> no, that's just Greg. It's just me, yeah. Um, okay, uh, so you're able to beat the hell out of Joey as we then go round the horn back up to Rex, who was... Because of his failure to defeat Rachel, he took that errant slap, and that errant slap might propel the paladin to finish her off here. But we don't know. Is God yeah, with Rex? We'll uh, we'll see here. Uh, the first um, first longsword attack, twenty four. Yeah, that's, that's a hit. I'll do it. And uh, I'll go ahead and pump a uh, I'll pump a smite into that. I'll pump a uh, another second level smite into that. So that's, uh, that'll be eight for the damage, another five for the improved Divine Smite, and then another 3d8. Another 16. You sunder Rachel as she splits in half, and the ichor and gore, much thicker and more and heavier than the mist that was uh, elicited from Monica as there is a splash and a splattering as entrails, blood, and the gore of fiends drops to the bone-dry dust of the Valley of Soot and Skull. And as it stands right now, we have witnessed the death of not only Chandler, we have witnessed the death of Rachel, and we have witnessed the death of Monica. We have witnessed Joey getting his ass handed to him while he is being held up by a big hand. And we have witnessed Ross who is going toe to toe with the masked gray fox, apparently neither of them wishing to fully kill the other. But we'll see how that all goes with our next round as we are gonna quickly take our break, everybody. It is the 10 o'clock hour and we are going to take our break and we will be back in 10 minutes. But uh, hang loose, get something to drink. That's what I'm gonna be doing. Oh, I'll see you in 10 minutes. I'm magnanimous.
Yeah, totally. Hey, everybody, we're back, and uh, apparently they've got this. Uh, <laughs> there was a big psych-up session right before we went live here because, you know, they're pretty sure they've got this. Uh, well, chat, you can bear witness, and you can see if they are, in fact, right with having gotten this. So as we cut back in, we're going to go to Gray Fox fighting Ross. Top of the round. This one's going to yeah. come down to a couple rolls. Maybe some of them already have been made. But Gray Fox, what are you going to do in front of all these people on the Greyhawk channel? Come on, man. Let's do this. Oh, God. Oh. Listen, how, when you're so happy that I fail. <laughs> I'm not. Uh. <laughs> Wink. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna um, spin my scimitars, um, and as I spin my scimitars, I'm gonna pick up the dust, and I'm gonna like throw it on the uh, on, on on the demon. Um, and doing so, I'm gonna cast Hunter's Mark on it. Okay. Waiting to use uh, this. One. It is mocked with mm, the mark of a hunter. Yes. Um, oh, yeah, what water? It's an excellent mark. mark. God, come on, Simi, you can do it. Yeah. That's a hit. I you just say slashing. Ooh, and a six. Nice. Uh, so that's 15 if I'm adding the maths. Mm -hmm. And I would let you know that Ross had 15 hit points remaining. So with both the Hunter's Mark and the Slash of a Scimitar, uh, Ross bleeds out in the Valley of Soot and Skull, joining his sister his would-be sometimes lover, his best friend, as they sink into the dirt. No longer friends, but just memories. <laughs> anything you would like, anything else All you right, would like to do? Friends. Uh, yeah. Um, well, now you, uh, are you bonus with uh, Hunter's Mark? And yeah. you have action, so this is a movement that you would have, unless you've got something... I do have two attacks. Could I be able to switch my weapon in that time, or no? Wait till next time. Uh, make a DC... This is a uh, house rule. Make a DC 15 dex check, and we'll see if it, you can fluidly do it in the middle of your <laughs> attacks. No, you can't. Oh. Okay. Uh, you drop you drop the arrow, you get the bow out, the arrow drops and hits the dirt. It, it too lands on Ross, does another point of damage. Uh, adding, you know, just rubbing it in at this point. Uh, damn you. Um, okay, so he is done, and that means that all of the original friends, bar Joey, are have gone. And Joey, as we admitted as part of the narrative, and because of the earlier tries by Giddy, is simply accepting death at this point. He has watched the fall of all of his friends. He is being held by Bigby's hand. Um, there really is no point. Uh, acting work has dried up here in the Valley of Soot and Skull. Um, Chandler's not around to, you know, pay rent. Oh my God, this is such a euphemism for all, all of his friends going off, disappearing for bigger and better things, and he's just left. Right. <laughs> and stuck and in it's, his own it's role. It's like, it's, it's right. It's like the spinoff. It's like the Joey spinoff. Uh, it's short-lived. Um, so, uh, okay, we will now go to Phoebe as once again, uh, this thing is going to cruise an, an additional 20 feet towards you, which means it's still going to be 30 out when it ends its turn. So when it ends its turn at 30 out, it's going to fire something and we will see what that something is. Oh. Is it cupcakes? Is it firing cupcakes? It looks like it's the cupcake eye. Yes. It Fuck it yes. looks like yes. It looks like cake boss. Uh, it's the cake boss eye. Um, I need you to make a DC sixteen Constitution saving throw. Is she uh, is she close enough to me at all where she would get the plus four bonus from uh, my aura of protection? Oh or me? That's too far I'm out. I'm rolling. That's Billy. Yes, Billy's yeah. making this roll. Shit. Because I remember you had said, uh, or uh, we would be closer together. You're still uh, at least 150 apart. Okay. 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 And the divine favor are re-rolls, right? 
Um, I believe they are six. You, we did have ones that were just automatic successes. For okay, us. no, I had one of those. The two I have, I have written down as rerolls. Okay, so are these skill check rerolls, saving throw rerolls, or general rerolls? If I recall what I rolled, it was overall. I'd have to go back in my notes, but. I can oh, check boy. real quick. Hey. Sure, check for me, Greg. Give me one second and I'll let you know. Cool. Because. Okay. I think I had rolled a. It was like a four or something? Uh, we've got the Divine Inspiration. We did not have that one. Supreme Fortune. One re roll of any single to hit ability check or saving throw. I believe that's the one yeah. that we had. Yeah. So, yep. Okay, here we go. 27. Bam! And so you do, in fact, you are able to uh, uh, juke and jive here as instead of taking. 41 damage you are it will round it down you take 20 damage as 20 necrotic damage as it seeps forward you feel the chill of the grave as this beam lances beneath your armpit of your left arm and for a moment it sends like a palsied almost like a heart attack stroke feeling down your left arm and your entire body kind of is forced into that rigid uh, motion the creature then uses the rest of its turn to move into range. As I will let you know, it is now three stocks in play as it has entered into its combat zone. Mm -hmm. But that's neither here nor there. Billy, it is now your turn. Okay. Fuck you, Phoebe. Um, so do I still do I still feel like I'm out of it the main cone? Um, it has again moved towards you and the large bulbous eye in the center has flicked around and you feel as if you feel that kind of depowering despite the, the, the energy that is in your arm. Um, you do, however, notice the full perception check for me. Okay. 16. Okay, with the DC 15, you are able to notice that it does not look at you until it shoots its other eye stalk beam at you and then moves the large eye into your range. It's as if it was looking out of the corner, keeping its primary gaze off of you until its magic had its way. Okay. And then the eye comes over. Okay. We're gonna stay here and do nothing but get shot or keep moving. <laughs> That's what that sounds like to me. Um, yep. hmm. Huh. Okay. I I just have to. Uh, I'm I'm just gonna keep. I'm I'm just gonna have to keep moving because I can't really do anything. I'm not close enough to do anything else for anyone else. So I'm going to just, yeah, I'm just going to keep moving away from its thing until I figure out something to do. Hopefully it gets distracted with the shiny thing that I'm running toward. So I'm going to just get out of its thing again and keep moving toward Rex. Um, you will notice that as you're running towards Rex, you're not getting any closer to Rex. Oh, God damn it! I, I am here to help. I know so much. Do you think... I will um, let you know this. You could flank, if you wanted to use, like, the dash action, you could movement and continue to kind of circle. You are able to do that. Um, mm -hmm. You would be able to put maybe an additional 30 feet between you. And this thing, while big, it, it's slow moving. Slow. Right. I mean, I can't really do anything until I'm able to use an action for a spell. So I'm, yeah, I'm gonna keep just trying to tire it out, I guess, for a bit until something else, till I can do something else. Yeah. Run, 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 run. Okie dokie. And yes, we lost uh, Eris. I will, let me see if I can Give me one second, uh, mm -hmm. fine kids, as I figure out how to get. Do, do, do. Let me do this. Look at me. <laughs> I'm such a big boy. Okay. Um, 
<laughs> Heavenly, <laughs> you are up, and Billy, you have made your move. Uh, this thou goes to Kaylee. We will hold this action as Kaylee is transported into the vicinity of the beholder. So Kaylee blinks out of existence by the body of Monica and reappears in the same fight space as Billy. Um, and Rex, let's see, we're going down to Giddy. Giddy, you have Joey in front of you. Uh, Joey is uh, uh, not happy, but um, he seems to have given up. I will let you put him out of his misery if you wish to kill him. Can I knock him unconscious? No, he wants death. <laughs> not, I, I'm not asking him. <laughs> Oh, yes, I can I will... bonus action kill him for you if you want. <laughs> I'm running, but I can do that anyway. I can just squeeze him to death. For yeah, you. I want to do non-lethal damage. After, <laughs> after I pummel his face in a bunch and done okay. some really nasty damage, I'd like to do non-lethal damage. Right, right. Okay, so um, I, I, we're going to say that you're able to beat this thing <laughs> into unconsciousness. Um, and as it drops into unconsciousness, uh, Angel runs up and runs his knife across the throat as the ichor pours down. And you didn't need to do that. He was down. He's not dead. He needs to be dead. He'll come back and kill you. And as this is occurring, this continuing of the existential crisis, you have Bigby's hand back under your control too, by the way, Billy. Um, it's it's holding a dead Joey. I, if that means anything to me. Well, it's it's gonna drop it, and then it's gonna start circling its way toward me. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> it does this to Angel as it flies away. He pays no mind. Um, which is the biggest insult you could give a bard. Uh, Rex, you disappear from beside the body of Rachel, and you reappear within twenty feet of the beholder. And uh, no, boss, this is the only time I've ever used the Friends cast as bad guys. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to try not to make a habit of it, but I could forget at some point. Um, so yeah, Rex, you have your turn, and you are within 20 of the Beholder. You are behind it, which is nice. Ooh. Well, all right. Uh, yeah, I'll definitely step up behind him and... Uh, or, or, I'm sorry, her. It was wrong of me to, to assume... Uh, and uh, and go ahead and just gonna gonna try to smite it. Gonna gonna lay into it. Gonna you're get gonna, some. Uh, are you gonna drop the brew hammer? Uh, yes. If by if by brew hammer you mean long sword, yes. Uh, the brew hammer is about to get dropped. Uh, hopefully, uh, with that sort of build up. Now watch me whiff both of these attacks. <clears throat> this is seventeen hit. <laughs> um, a seventeen does not hit. And then the second one. There you go. There All you right. go. So that will be uh, six for the long sword, plus two. Oh, for the love of Tritharian. Uh, so that's eight. And then uh, I will pump another uh, second level smite into there. So that will be another uh, 3d8. So so that's 10, 12, 18 total. Ugh. Bad damage there. Nothing you can do about it. Mm. Okay, so you're able to get a hit in from behind on Phoebe. As we come back around to the top of the round, Gray Fox is up, and as it is around since the vanquishing of Ross, Gray Fox blinks out of existence and appears in the area. You are 30 feet away from Phoebe as you see Rex run in, miss, and then slice back across the bulbous form of this beholder. Gray Fox, what would you like to do? Uh, bonus action, move my Hunter's Mark onto it. Yep. And then I'm going to just move back 40 feet. Um, um, I will allow you to move back 10, and then you seem to be walking in place. So you're 40 feet away from it. Okay. Uh, I'm going to, like, try and, like, run behind, like, behind it. So that's literally, like, a whole rotation. Um, and then I'm going to um, just shoot it. 
Okay, you're basically shooting over uh, Rex's shoulder, so that's your position. Okay. Okay, let's see here. Shooty, shoot, shoot. Chop shooter. Normal. 18. There you go. That hits. Yep. Nice. Uh, Kenzai. Zigzag. Uh, D6. Ooh, another six. Nice. Nice. That's a total of 27 for that round. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. <clears throat> do you have anything else you would like to do, sir? No, I use my bonus action to move the hunter's mark, and I move and I attack. That's all I can do. That's what you got. Awesome, buddy. Okay, so Phoebe takes a strike from behind from the paladin, a strike from behind as the archer, Mr. 7341, is able to blast through with a combination of Frankenstonian powers that are created inside the Mike Merle's Frankenstein Player's Handbook. Um, we then go to Phoebe. And in Phoebe's range right now is a paladin. But Phoebe is going to move a bit, promoting an attack of opportunity from the paladin. So as she begins to cruise in the direction of Kaylee and Billy, seeming to work herself into an angle to hit all three. We go ahead and roll that attack of opportunity that you get, Mr. Paladin. And I will hit. pump I'll pump a divine smite of that as well. Keep it, keep keep those pumps coming, you're gonna need them. Oh yeah. This one will be a third level. So uh we'll do uh the the long sword damage, that's nine plus two, that's uh eleven plus forty-eight. There you so go. twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. Very, very good. There you go. You're on the rise. As we are going to do the following. Um, players, pick who is one, pick who is two, and pick who is three between Kaylee, Billy, and Rex. We've actually had good luck with Billy like assigning this. It seems like we, we, we've yeah. good luck for whom? <laughs> Okay, uh, Kaylee wants to be two, so I'll be one, which I already Thank regret. You. Kaylee will be two, and Rex will be three. Billy. What? I'm just making an announcement before I roll. <laughs> Kaylee. <laughs> Same number. Wow. The fuck? <laughs> Okay. The, the fuck. It's meant um, to be Kaylee. Just pick Kaylee. Okay. So no, 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 no. This is what you were going to each get. You all got the same thing. So oh. as this thing kind of rapid fire shoots, um, a lot of people they say that once one of the stocks are used, then you have to go to another one. I don't play it like that. I play it like if you get the certain one, it uh, you, you can machine gun it. So with this machine gun, it I want everybody to make a DC 16 constitution saving throw. Cool. Uh, are any of them within 10 feet of me, Greg? Um, we're gonna say Kaylee is. Okay, then Kaylee, you can add a plus four to yours. That doesn't help. I'm gonna, Maybe it will. I'm gonna have to use one of my rerolls. Do I have a reroll? Do I? Chat, tell me, fuck me. Do I need to roll? Uh, whatever. No, no. Uh, so. Um, ice. I have a D4. It's not gonna help you, even with a four. You said it's a twelve. It's a sixteen. I said it's a sixteen. Oh, never yeah. mind. Doesn't matter. With the natural twenty, Rex, as you take your swipe into the beholder. Uh, Phoebe turns and the eye stock fires off three rapid shots. One of them you're able to kind of completely bypass you, but as your gaze kind of drifts past as you're angling in for your next attack, you see that both Kaylee and Billy are frozen in place as they are just standing there completely motionless as if they've been hit and paralyzed. 
because it's exactly what has happened. So um, we would now jump to Billy, but Billy is frozen, and we will get to the end of Billy's turn, and Billy can now try to roll again that Constitution saving throw. Nope. Billy remains frozen. And now we go to Kaylee. Kaylee, you can't do anything, but at the end of your turn, you can roll a constitution saving throw. Oh. Nope. So you see them kind of for a moment, there's movement around the, the, the soft muscles of the eyes, and they are frozen in place. And so now we will go to Giddy. And Giddy, just as you turn and are about to have this conversation with Angel, uh, Angel disappears, Ooh. but it's not Angel disappearing, it's you disappearing and reappearing by the beholder. Angel is not with you. Mm-hmm. You see him in the distance, 150 feet away, uh, standing by the fallen body of Joey. But he's the one who killed Joey. I must is. suffer. You must suffer I'm... for your art. <laughs> um, cue the Fiona apple. Um, okay, so... I need you to tell me what you want to do. This is you have the entirety of your turn right here, Giddy, as the beholder is in front of you. Two of your friends, the druid Kaylee and the bard Billy, are frozen. And you see that the remainder of your friends, the remainder of the company of the hand, they're scrambling and they're fighting their best, but everyone seems beat to shit. And this creature does not. Okay. How far away am I from, like, everyone? Are we within a certain range? Um, you could get to anybody that you would want with your base movement, because you move at okay. 40, right? So you can if you can get there. Oh, <laughs> then yes, yeah, absolutely can get there. <laughs> wow, wow, fuck you, Greg. Okay, oh yeah, so you can definitely get there um, to anybody that you need to get to. Uh, you can also get to Phoebe, should you wish to fist the cuffs with her uh, just tell me what you need I'm gonna sit back I I was trying to see I know I can cure poisons and disease but I don't think I can cure effects on other people I don't think so either damn it unless you've got something that I don't I'm not Mr. Monk so um, if you've got yeah. something that I don't know about I no, so I'm going to hit it with my uh, my quarter staff that hopefully is now hard and ready for action, and I'm going to try and stun it. So I'm going to spend a key point to attempt to stun it. You're going to try to stun it, okay? I'm going to try and stun it. Uh, Lauren and I just saw this to great fucking effect uh, <clears throat> at Critical Role Live at Gen Con. Um, so I, I'm oh. all for it as little Giddy runs through the Valley of Soot and Skull and launches up for a uppercut stunning strike to the very bag-like beholder uh, that looks very much like a scrotum. Um, and you are going to speed bag that scrotum like Sugar Ray. So you need to hit first, correct? I believe I have to hit for it to stun. You have to hit, and then I get to make a DC, and then yeah, uh, a Constitution DC. saving throw. Yeah, go ahead and roll that 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 beautiful hit, and I think you can pump this into <laughs> anything. Oh shit! Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Everybody, calm down. I've got a DC here. I gotta make. Okay, so uh, it's a Constitution. What's your DC on this one? Ooh, you know what? That's oh, Greg. That's such a good question. That's such a good question. You think I would know, and yet I don't. Uh, I okay. think it's thirteen plus your wisdom. Um, yeah, it should be. Okay, my wisdom's two, so fifteen. Yeah. Okay, kids, this is going to be a tough one. Let's see what we got. Oh, oh. so for a second. The, the 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 testicle scrotum like Phoebe shivers as this the the quaking shot of the stunning strike goes through the bulbous body. Um, it doesn't matter because I'm gonna try it two more times with my 
flurry, so. Okay, you're, you're pumping key points into it. That's perfectly fine. Um, she hasn't used them at all. She's got like a full... Okay, 11 bludgeoning. Nice, nice. Okay, so, and everything's considered magic for you, so yep, yep, yep. Okay. okay. Uh, yep, keep so I'm gonna, fire. I'm going to punch it. I will it. let you I'm know this. Stun it. With the first ball shot into uh, Phoebe by Giddy, your beholder looks bloody. Yeah. Ooh, okay. That doesn't hit. That does not hit. Okay, well, um, rude. And I'm going to punch it again. That fucking that hits. That does hit. Yeah. I'm trying to stun it. All right. It is stunned. <sighs> so, nice. narratively, as this goes down, the smallest among you runs through the dust, jumps up, strikes, sends a quivering blow through the beholder, lands, jumps up again, misses, and with a snap kick to the sack, it sends a quake right through this thing, sack. and you you see the, the main eye lull up into the, the pate of stalks, and all, every eye on every stalk rolls up as if it's rolling into a, a forehead that does not exist. And so um, make sure you give me damage for, you already did? Uh, okay, so the creature is stunned until it's, I believe, the end of its next round, correct? End of your next round, isn't it? Yeah, it should be end of yep. your next round. my next round. Yep, hashtag snap, cack, snap kick to the sack. It's something that's gonna be trending worldwide here as Giddy has Hashtag done so. snap kick to the sack. <laughs> Rex, Rex, you have advantage on your strike as you are able to stride in behind the now stunned beholder. And uh, we just got a hundred in. Hey, I cheer that too. Um, All right, <laughs> I will. Uh, I'll make yep. my first. Uh, I'm sorry, what? Chris? Nope. I'm just gonna say you have advantage uh, oh. against this bad boy. Uh, boss just confirmed in the chat. Uh, All right, awesome. let's. So, yeah, it's not an automatic crit or anything. It's still kind of, but you get advantage on the attack. Yep. Let's see this first one. Oh. <laughs> Which is a net fucking 20. Oh. Um, All right. So uh, we'll do the damage on that first. So that will be, uh, what is that, 5 plus? I'm not sure which one that is. You that's, use the second one. The so second yes. one? Yeah, okay, second, so that's so 17. 17. Plus improved Divine Smite, but that's twice because it's a crit. So 21. 29 and then i will definitely use another third level spell to add another yes. 48 which makes that 88 because it's a crit holding holding there you go <laughs> oh. okay so with this absolutely devastating shot that rocks through this thing you see that several of the eye stalks are cut and sundered as the blade of Rex comes through the side of this beholder's head. And it just sits there. It's still like reeling back and forth as it's, it, if it were a fighter, it would be staggering around the ring as another blow lands into it. Rex, I think that was only your first strike, was it not? That was my first strike, yes. <laughs> Uh, so the second one, we'll do it again at advantage. Uh, Does not no. hit. Yeah. Does I'm not a little hit, surprised so. by my own by my own uh, prowess there. Right. So with that <laughs> stagger, as it stumbles away from the devastating strike, it is uh, it kind of moves and inadvertently saves itself from what could have very well been a killing blow. And so as we roll back to the top of the round. Off there in the distance, somewhere 40, 50 feet away, is the masked elf, Gray Fox. You see that this creature, this Phoebe, this being of eye and stalk, has been stunned by Little Giddy, flayed by the paladin, 
while Billy and Kaylee are still frozen in place. Gray Fox, what will you do? Uh, he's going to, um, it's going to be, because he's like, continuously running, so he's going to stop, skid, and he's going to like take out his bow and just like, we see kind of uh, throw up with like black pepper magic and going to like sharpshooter attack. And this is where you nail this. I know, you've like, missed this so many times. I know, I know this is the nailing is strike right here. Ah, oh, yeah, 22. Um, uh, so with that shot, you sink it perfectly as the eye, the main eye rolls back down and begins to focus. It creates the perfect bullseye as the sliding gray fox uses it to wink and fire. And Phoebe floats slowly to the dust. Oh, yes. I just kind of say, I just kind of say, Elisalina. And as it like hits it, I just kind of like turn away because I don't look at explosions. <laughs> <laughs> right, and for That's whatever reason. You know you're cool when you don't look at That it, was yeah. really cool, Gray Fox. It was so cool. I loved it. It was great. <laughs> okay, so um, as all of you sit there, a minute later, a couple, you know, maybe 40 seconds, 45 seconds later, uh, Billy and Kaylee kind of stumble out of this, this frozen condition, and all of you blink. And when you come to, you're all still just shattered. You know, many of you on the brink of death, but you are now in the valley. In fact, you're through the valley. And before you is a large domed structure, now very identifiable. It has columns on the outside, depicting an architecture that is both familiar and foreign. And inside this dome, you see very briefly that there appears to be some type of hole cut in the center of it, as if at least a portion of the structure inside is exposed to the air of the Valley of Soot and Skull. And before you is a candle. Also, Angel the Bard. What? Hey, hi, sup? What are you doing here? Where's Ernestine? Yes, where is Ernestine? Oh, yeah, so, um, surprise, in the middle of battle, this guy came out of Ernestine. Did he go to Da? You know, usually when someone says that, it means a completely different thing. I, he literally came out of Ernestine, I don't know what else it could mean. First off, I'm no sure. Ernestine. Second, team, second, I came out a long time ago, but this... <laughs> He did, he sent out newsletters. So did I. Congratulations. It's like my debutante. Um, <laughs> I apologize for the, the farce, but uh, it was something that we needed to do. Really? Wh why? Everything we told you was true, but there is a level of uh, deception that needs to be at play because... Uh, the enemy is, the enemy's eyes are everywhere, even here in the valley. So, who is actually the one who has been blessed? His eyes fall to Giddy. I should have known from the start. It does what not is... surprise me. Oh, what does that mean? She takes a drink from her flask. I mean, if you like stories as much as we do, it seems pretty obvious. Yes. Yes, it does. I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna punch Angel in the face. So much that I break his nose. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> you can certainly Ooh. roll an attack. Do it, do it, babe. Um, please, please do it. Uh, See. It'll give him more character. <laughs> <laughs> Please grit on it. 
Oh. This is the damage. I mean. Oh, wait, oh, wait no. Okay. I hit damage and sensitive. Yeah. Okay. yeah, that was the damage. Yeah, I'm trying. Second. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> come on, do it, do it. Do, do it. it. Punch it. <laughs> punch it. Punch is hard. Punch it. Great, come on, believe me. <laughs> Don't make me have to inspire you. Just do it yourself. Hey, oh, there we go. Very good. Greg, Greg, I will use protection and, and force a reroll. Oh. I'm going to try to protect the bard. Okay. Uh, me? Why? You, you try to protect me. Thank you. I appreciate Well, it. angel and bard. I already, well, yeah, I, feel, I, feel like, I feel like I already protected you somewhat. No. Yeah, kind of. Little. Little. Yeah. That's much. Saved your life twice. A lot. Yeah, yeah true. Sure. Okay, so narratively, as we're going to play this, this punch is headed straight for the nose of Angel the Bard. And with a flick of the wrist, the paladin pulls him by the collar, and the shot aimed from Gray Fox misses Angel the Bard. <laughs> and Angel get... kind of looks up at Rex and nods. This gets us nowhere. Does. This gets us absolutely nowhere. We have to remain focused on what we need to do. Why have I risked my life? Why have any of us risked our life? We're we're still trying to get to the same goal. It's just apparently the parameters have changed. Although, and he'll look at Angel now and say, although if there are any more wrinkles in this, they need to be unveiled now. Exactly. I pull back my bow. You better stop speaking, pretty boy. I can't stop him a second time. I've already used my reaction. <laughs> you can see Kaylee starting to prepare a spell. Her, her her hands start glowing as she kind of moves slightly, and you this you is, can see there's something coming. This is all very okay. spectacular. Okay. Just. I lust. Light the candle, please. That's the last trick. Tell us first. I light the candle. I won't wait. The Valley of Soot and Skull disappears, as does Angel the Bard, as Spark hits Wick and the candle begins to burn. The glow of the candle is enough to illuminate ten feet around you. There is no air current to buffet the flame. And as you're standing there, you hear, as if walking across stone or or hard wood, the stride of heel, of boot, and you see a shape coming from the darkness, and it reveals itself fully, and there is no hand below the right sleeve, (sighs) as Raynard stands before you. I switch my aim. That won't help you. You're alive. That's that's fun. Well, Haley has um. What is it? Oh, uh, what it's called? Sorry. No, we liked him. Haley, don't cast light on him. Haley has primal savagery. Uh, prepared she is ready to but she is holding it. let's all just chill out we don't need to light any candles until we're all done talking and we don't need to shoot anybody oh the candles lit no i know we don't have to light any more candles <laughs> oh oh you're like light this puppy up okay gotcha sure whatever Are you sure billy how wounded is uh, is Giddy, uh, Heavenly? Uh, I'm definitely Eris is more wounded than Giddy is. I'm up. I'm at forty three, so I'm like half. Oh, okay. I'm at. Like, uh, how many? How much to bring you back up to full? Me or Eris? You. Uh, hers is ninety three. Is her max? I think. Right? Yeah, yes. I'm at. So what is yeah. that? So what's like? What is that? Fifty? I don't well, know. I didn't hear that. Let me pull out my calculator. I. Yeah. There's, I'm not going to do like math live. I will say it looks pretty bad. Okay. Uh, Kaylee's really rough. Yeah, Kaylee's at like two. Okay. Then I'll pump. Kaylee's at 26 now. 
Okay. Oh, um, has it been another? Is it her turn again? Because she gets another one d six on every one of her turns. I'll you use were outside uh, of the casting area. Unless you cast it on yourself, does it travel with you, or is it centralized on a location? It, you teleport? it centralizes on a location. So yes, if I travel, the circle, yeah. then it's I'm no longer in the location, but I can spend a bonus action to move it to me. Okay. Then a certain uh, amount of distance. Okay, I, I will go ahead and allow you to give yourself 2d6 worth of healing. Um, as you guys are figuring this all out, though, uh, Raynard is looking around and says, I apologize for all of this. This is uh, deceitful. It's not something that I wish to do. Then try speaking the truth. Who are you? vested interest in not only the shield lands but all of the lands very well but it's yeah there we yeah no no he's 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 gonna give it to us come on i'm a god and that's where we'll end this session <laughs> of the valor of sit and skull for Why? for for reference, I did not get to use lay on hands on either of you. So <laughs> we were trying to figure that out, and then uh, that got. But wait, wait, no, this is so. Matt sorry. will get you killed. I tried. Really? Yeah, I tried. <laughs> I've... Oh, okay, yeah, there we I've go. I've got a everybody. whole thirty-four hit points. It'll be fine. You guys we could have had another thirty-five more. Just, I mean, it's it's just cool. Within... It's fine. It's great. I just, actually, I think we're okay. I think this is my god. I'm sorry, Greg. I didn't mean to interrupt you. <laughs> it's, it's, Whatever. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's maybe it's just, he just wants to hang out. You know, we just got to see what's going on. We here. were really it nice. What it him. is? He was our yeah. friend. We were really nice to him. So I, think I mean, so. realistically, we were pretty nice to him in long run. You, you were. I'm, I'm. Listen, you're second guessing yourselves, players. Uh, <laughs> stick with that. That you were. You were nice. Uh, I was we'll actually. We're talking. Uh, okay, so let's reverse this up and flip the script. And Pro, if you could help me again, I still haven't been able to do any of the links. Uh, let's go uh, from the top of the order for, we'll start with the chosen one herself and the new master of the stunning scrotal strike, Heavenly. How are you doing this evening? And better yet, Giddy's sack hand is strong tonight mm -hmm. so uh i i i was very worried about that beholder and i feel like this is what i love so much about D D &D, is that the precursory fight was what we struggled with and then when the big baddie came we're just like oh can we just can we just kill it in two strikes and we just all fucking nailed it that was that was really hilarious i loved it it was just perfect yeah, awesome. And where can we find you online? And before you say that, let me say this. Um, that whole fight flips the script if Kaylee doesn't save herself in that one round because then she's bleeding out in an area that you guys can't get to. Um, if a couple of people had fallen, I mean, I know that a, a few of you were pretty close to checking out. Um, that scattered element would have been tough, especially if Billy had had to go another round against this thing by herself. Which she survived yeah, two fucking rounds like... against the Beholder. So, I mean, there was a lot of, like, um, I can't tell you, uh, Chad, I think you all picked up on my severe depression when I realized that the Disintegrate Beam does not do half damage on a save. It does no damage. And that is something they need to work on <laughs> in 6th edition. I'm just saying. It's fine. That's a bit, that's a bit of bullshit throwing it out there i'm sorry heavenly where are you online <laughs> you're muted can you hear me now okay there we yes. go figured yes. it out um i am on twitter at tiz underscore aliens that's it that's where i am nice. nice nice and thank you very much and i'm so glad that we are able to see giddy do that thing that monks do and it's so apropos that it was done 
in similar fashion to what was done on the uh, the Critical Role show two weeks ago. That I didn't I stood even up see and, that. Yeah, yeah, they, it was a stunning, it was, it's basically the same, the big bad got stunned and then got the shit kicked out of him. And that is the best. I love it, I love it, I love it. Um, and Mr. Distance, 7341 Pro, how are you doing, brother? I'm good, I'm good. Fucking shocked with these twists and turns and not being able to punch people's noses. Um, that wasn't my <laughs> fault. I was going to let you connect. <laughs> um, but no, super good games. Uh, fun playing with everyone. Hey, I, I am Pro Restarter. Catch me on Twitch and Twitter, all that good stuff. You can catch me tomorrow at uh, 6 p.m. BST on the Olenia channel as we uh, run Path of the Demon Lord, our Shadow Demon actual play. Uh, lots of cool, awesome people. Uh, catch me there. Catch me on lovely internet. Also, catch me on my new YouTube channel, uh, Pro Restarter. Because my, I, I, I keep saying this, my old one just got deleted. Thanks, YouTube. Thank you. <laughs> yes, YouTube. I hope you're listening, YouTube. You entity, yeah. you. Awesome, brother. Awesome. Uh, let's roll over to the Paladin. Uh, the Paladin dropped some serious hurt after being set up by the Monk. Um, one of the that... best one-two punches in all of D&D is the Monk stunning strike and then the Paladin pumping in the smite. Uh, we got to see it in full effect today. I do believe that Phoebe had the best view of it, though. How are you doing, brother? Oh, I'm doing fantastic. Uh, I love uh, how we, we, you know, in this one fight, you know, we, we've come together even more as a group and uh, and fight more effectively. That was Giddy's crit. That was all Giddy's crit, which would probably mortify her for me to say. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, I had an absolute blast. Uh, loving the game and, and loving everyone I, I play with. You can find me online at uh, Brewhammer, at Brewhammer DND uh, on the Twitter. And uh, also, uh, you can catch me on Age of Conan uh, on um, sometimes on Friday uh, when I'm when I'm in that in that mix. So Conan hype. Awesome, awesome, brother. Yep, uh, age undreamed of. And let us go north. Actually, you know what? No, let us go to Lauren. Lauren, Billy. She was dancing around today. I'm saving the birthday girl for last. Uh, you were dancing around today. You were doing that bard thing, which is. Oh shit, I don't have anything to do to other people. I don't have any offensive capabilities. I can help, but only from afar. It was glorious. You dodged a disintegrate ray, which yep. I think I've stated that I'm very magnanimous about that. And uh, <laughs> Yeah, you're not salty at all, I can tell. <laughs> how are you? Where can we find you? Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. I always feel so special when you introduce me that way. Hi, I'm Lauren. I'm that salty ginger over on Twitter. Um, places you can find me on the internet. Uh, sometimes I play Conan with Greg and Brew. It's super fun. We're doing that Friday at noon Eastern. Um, and then tomorrow, it's the mid-season premiere. We're halfway through the season of Project Athena, Hulk Cthulhu on Greg's channel, Grimcheck21502 uh at 7 p.m eastern nobody's a complete wreck over there so you don't even have to worry about it it's all so great uh but come watch it because it's super fun it's my favorite thing so come watch it nice 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 um and then as we go finally around the horn to our <laughs> druid that was able to wrest victory away from the jaws of defeat blue hair in full effect the birthday girl, Eris, how are you doing? And where can we find you? Oh my you gosh, that? this was so much fun. I had so much fun. I always have fun with you guys every single game. It's great. I have had 0% rum, zero. Um, you can find me at Eris Savad on Twitter. Um, there you can find all the other stuff I do. I make dice bags, I make dice trays, I make a bunch of stuff. I'm doing cosplay and surprise, I'm going to be doing a Kaylee cosplay coming up. Yay! You guys will see that soon. But yes, that's my surprise for tonight. Aside from the blue hair and ears, I have more surprises. Nice. No rum. L Just surprises. Oh, no, I think you should keep... Rum's always a surprise for me. 
Uh, surprise, you're way drunker than you thought. Surprise, you're sick. There's, surprise, you're in the hospital. That's always there's my the thing going with me and tentacles. Just saying, cracking rum. Um, me, there's you know what? It's just this, my life is tentacles. Tentacles as well. It just everywhere <laughs> I turn, it's Cthulhu. It's Angel the Bard getting handsy I mean, when I'm trying to go to sleep. If you right. couldn't tell, I like Octopi. I see, <laughs> I see that. All right, kids. Awesome, awesome, awesome. As for myself, I am Grimjack21502 on the Twitches and the Twitters. Uh, join me over on Twitter uh, for my schedule of events. Uh, I will see. What am I going to promote? Well, I'm going to promote tomorrow night Project Athena over on my channel as displayed by Lauren straight above. Uh, it is my Pulp Cthulhu, it is our Pulp Cthulhu show set in 1933. We punch Nazis, we fight tentacled beasts, and uh, by God, we look great doing it. And really, that's all that matters. But also, before we leave the Greyhawk channel, I want to remind you to go get your cantrip candle, all of you new uh, subscribers and Patreon supporters. And I told you at the beginning, I was smelling their beautiful scent magnanimous, which of course we all know means vengeance. And also go over to Tabletop Loot. These are some Saints Relics uh, die. I had some Dragon Bone over there. They roll 20s all the time, guaranteed. Just and saying, then, I've got a couple sets on my desk right now. The, the Dragon Bone is fantastic. I love the feel of it. It's the Dragon Bone dice are uh, really, really love them. Really, the really dig them. Yep. And, and uh, Devin Rue, the mistress of the maps, go over to Rue Inc. See some of the best damn maps in this whole big damn verse. But she until both of the graphics that are in my background, yep, just saying. I absolutely the compass rose, um, and then just so the chat knows, guys, you have been absolutely fantastic. Thanks for hanging out with us. We have two episodes left before the end of this story. Two episodes. So if it seems like it's going fast, well, that's because it is. And next week we will be our penultimate episode, and two weeks from tonight. We will see just who survives, if anyone, the Valley of Soot and Skull. But everyone, please have a good week from this Saturday to the next. Be careful. Love one another. Uh, as we do here on the Greyhawk channel, it is not between Dungeon Masters and players. It is about the story. I'm lying. It's about Dungeon Masters trying to kill the players. That's all it is here on Greyhawk. No. It's a great community. Please join mm -hmm. us on Discord. We will see you all later. Have a fantastic one and love one another.